Hey fellow explorers, earlier this year I had the opportunity to spend five amazing days in Singapore and in this video I've compiled the best things to see, do and eat in those five days. Now in addition to showing you some of Singapore's best attractions, I'm also going to show you some of Singapore's best street food. But the attractions we're going to check out include the iconic Merlion statue, the futuristic Marina Bay Sands Casino, the Gardens by the Bay Biodome, the Singapore Zoo, often considered the world's best, the world's largest indoor water waterfall at Singapore's airport, which is also considered the world's best airport. We're going to check out the National Museum of Singapore to learn Singapore's origin story. And of course, we're going to visit some of Singapore's coolest neighborhoods, including the historic colonial district where Singapore got its start, Chinatown for its outdoor street market, Sentosa Island for its beaches and recreational activities, Little India for its colorful buildings, and Kampong Glam, the cultural heart of Singapore's Muslim community. Now, if you're a regular viewer here at Yellow Productions, you may have seen all all of this before as I've previously published this content in a few separate videos but I've had numerous requests to put it all into one so people can see all five days together in one video. All right, enough of the introduction already. Let's go see Singapore. Now, any good visit to Singapore starts right here and no, not at the Fullerton Hotel, but at Merlion Park, which is right across from the Fullerton Hotel. The Merlion is like the unofficial symbol of Singapore, half lion, half fish. Singapore is often known as the Lion City and it's a big maritime city with shipping, so there you go. And right in the background is the Marina Bay Sands, the most famous hotel and casino in Singapore. There's a really neat swimming pool up there on top. I'm not staying there. I'm staying at the JW Marriott South Beach, which is right here. A neat, fairly new Marriott hotel in Singapore. I'm gonna show you that later. Now just five minutes later on my way to Chinatown, my first rainstorm in Singapore. Singapore, it's hot and it's humid and that means it rains a lot. Like every day, like multiple times a day. Um, and the great part is a lot of it's covered. So right now I'm underneath this like office building that has some cover, uh, but you'll definitely want to have your umbrella handy when you come to Singapore. Uh, Cause sometimes they can be short lived, but other times they can be short lived and really, really quite strong. Chris, where's your umbrella? You know, it's back in the hotel room. That's a good place for it, but you can learn from my mistakes. She had an umbrella, she was smart. Okay, all good plans are made to be changed with the now pouring rain. I decided to stop at Lao Pa Sat Festival Market. This is a really neat hawker center right in the central business district. I'll get my chicken rice in Chinatown in just a bit, but I think I'm gonna eat something here instead of continuing to get super wet. Now this hawker center, the locals would tell you, is probably not one of the most delicious. Uh, it's one of the most touristy. It has a really neat look in this old like iron roof building, big fans. Um, and I think it's a neat one for you to go to as a tourist, even why I stopped in here too. And I didn't yet make it to my Tian Tian chicken rice in Chinatown. We're hopefully going to get there when the rain dies down. But for $8 here total, I got a roasted chicken rice. Let's have a bite of this. Oh, chicken rice. It's This is like the national dish of Singapore generally comes with a few different sauces, chili sambal, uh, dark soy sauce. And so you dip the chicken rice in, that's what we dip the chicken in the sauce. Mm, moist, flavorful. And then the rice has generally been steamed, cooked in the chicken broth soup with ginger and some other seasonings. Often served with the soup really quite good. I should point out when you come to Hawker Center in Singapore, and by the way, this is not the first one I'm going to go to in this video. I'm going to go to a lot more over the next five days, uh, is drinks. There's generally just like one or two drink stalls. Most of the stalls don't sell drinks. And so you got to seek out the drink stall. I would get your drink first and then go get your food. Uh, this place that sold the sugar cane also sells like lime juice. It's the one stall in the middle of the Hawker Center. That's often where it is. And then there was a second stall that just sold beer. Um, but you know what? There's so many places to sell chicken rice. They're all pretty good. I don't think you'll go wrong with any one of them. And uh, this is another great example of a pretty good specimen. I'm loving my first lunch here in the Lion City. All right, with my tummy kind of foolish and Lao Passat in the distance and the rain not coming down as hard anymore. I'm making my trek back to Chinatown again. And so 
what started as a 22 minute walk at noon has turned into two hours later, it's now 2 p.m. I hear some thunder and lightning off in the distance and you know what, even if I had an umbrella, I don't think I would have walked in that rain because it was really, really, really heavy. But it's nice now because the rain, like after the rain, that's your time you wanna go outside in Singapore because it's cooled it down quite a bit. It's actually like quite comfortable now and I probably don't notice if I sweat as much because I'm just generally, generally wet. I know I'm getting closer to Chinatown because the street signs now are changing to Chinese characters and the high-rise buildings are giving way to little two or three story Chinese shop houses. All right, I found it right there, the Maxwell Road Hawker Center across a rainy road. I, I got a little bit wet, but that's okay. Uh, I am a rainy after all, so this is my day. Wow, this Hawker Center is so much busier than Lao Passat and the line for Tian Tian chicken rice. Oh my gosh, it was like 30 people long and went out into the rain. I waited probably about 20 minutes, but I definitely had to get my chicken rice. Six dollars for the medium set. I got the steamed one and um, here we go. I had to sit outside because there was no place to sit inside. So I'm, I'm kind of a little bit in the rain here, but look, that's okay. It's actually a little cooler to sit outside than it is inside. This is a much um, bigger chicken rice portion than the last one that I had. This only comes with one sauce, one piece, no choices of sauces, just you get that one. Mmm, eh. mmm, mmm. Wow, wow. This is so much better, <laughs> this is so much better. So um, why is it so much better? The chicken is moister, the chicken is more flavorful. And then this sauce, it's just this like amazing combination of spicy but gingery and the rice mm, is also so flavorful like and moist too. I could eat this rice just by itself. I am so happy I am here in Singapore today even though I'm a little wet and hot. By the way, the, the comments about it being hot and wet, they're not going to end at this part of the video. They're going to go on for five days, probably, because uh, that's a common theme. What have I got to drink? Lime juice. Right here. Sour. It makes you pucker. $1.50 Singaporean. So uh, $5 for this great meal with some fancy seating. After having a full belly with the chicken rice, the rain stopped and so I wandered around Chinatown a little bit. There's some neat like shopping streets, outdoor vendors. It's one of Singapore's most colorful neighborhoods and I just enjoy walking around. But I've worked up an appetite now and so now I'm in the Chinatown Food Center. This is the biggest hawker center in Singapore. 260 food stalls and I decided it's time for dessert. What do I have here? I have sendal. What is sendal? Ice condensed milk, um, red bean, and pandan leaves all together. $2.50. Mmm. It's good. It's sweet. It's also salty. It's sweet, salty. Together. Mmm. But, I mean, for $2.50, you can't go wrong. And I got this from mm, Old Amoy Sendal. Kind of here in the back, um, back corner. Look, I have a stall number. 02008 if you're looking for some cheap dessert here in Chinatown. Oh, and they definitely love their YouTubers here in Singapore. This restaurant, Fortune Court, has a screenshot saying we were featured on Mike Chen's channel. Maybe I should do a Yellow Productions video so they can be featured on Yellow Productions. Fortune Court, I expect a poster. And as you explore the street market, they've got lots of signs to tell you about the history, like enjoy this old swing. I think our uh, three-year-old daughter would really enjoy that. Overall, I probably spent a couple hours wandering the streets of Chinatown. I mean, I can spend more here. It's dinner time, but I think I'm gonna make my way back to the hotel and call it an early night being my first night here. You know, the jet lag starting to get to me. So on my way back to the MRT, I got a, a glance and a whiff of the People's Park Food Center. And so on second thought, I think I'm going to get my dinner over there. I'm going to make it today as like an all Hawker Center marathon day. And I've not been to this one yet. So let's go see what tasty treats await us in there. Wow. Well, once I got in this place, it is massive in here. And so after I did a lap for like 
15 minutes trying to figure out where I wanted to eat, I decided on the place that sells the pork rice right there with the duck and the pork hanging in the window. It also had some Michelin awards previous years. So, uh, not recent years though. Makes me wonder, is it still as good? I don't know. Not everybody can get the Michelin award all the time. This pork rice right here, uh, $5. This is a large size. Mmm. Moist, crispy, salty. Pretty good. Let's try the rice. Mmm. Sweet rice. And for the $5, it also came with a bowl of soup. Pleasant. Pleasant. I think it's a chicken broth. And to drink, I got an iced tea. Everybody knows I like iced tea. They like iced lemon tea here in Singapore. There's a like actual lemon in it. And plus one point, yellow straw. Mmm. <laughs> Lemony. I think this is also sweetened too. It's got ice in it though. Nice and cold, which I can use. Oh, so what I forgot to show you earlier was that it also comes with a chili sambal sauce to make it spicier. And as I'm sitting here eating this pork with the sambal sauce, a local woman comes up to me. I didn't get her name. I'm sorry. But she goes and says, it's, do you, do you really like that? It's so strange to see a foreigner eating the, eating the spicy sauce. Do you like it? And I'm like, I, I love it. It's not really as delicious as when you get this. And honestly, the sambal sauce in Singapore just has an amazing quality to it of like the complex flavors that I just don't find anywhere else. They also love their YouTubers here. So when she said like, are you a YouTuber? Then she wanted to take a selfie, which was awesome. Today I have taken selfies with, I think six people. Uh, and, and not everybody knows me. They just are like, I hand them a card and they're like, you're a YouTuber and I want to take a picture with you. Now my daughter wants to take a picture and now my wife wants to take a picture with you. But it was also great to run into uh, my fellow explorers from Australia, Kai from earlier. I ran into a fellow a uh, Singaporean who's from the San Francisco Bay Area over at the Chinatown Food Center. So, mm, it's like a Yellow Productions meetup here in Singapore today. All right, well, after that dinner, I need a walk. And uh, Google Maps here says it's a 31 minute walk back to the hotel. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna try to actually make this 31 minutes. Everything today has gone way longer than I had planned. But uh, that's the thing about being a video creator is everything takes way longer than like a travel guide or something I would recommend, you know, when a book or a tour says like, hey, um, this will only take an hour to do this tour, you know, and ends up taking me three because I got to walk it and then decide what I want to shoot and then actually shoot it. I'm not really complaining. Hey, this is a neat vending machine. It's like a vending machine of toys. That's cool. And uh, there's a there's a McDonald's here. I mean, I just like walking. I contemplated for a moment taking a taxi, but the taxi would take eight minutes. But then I'm like, I'll get back to the hotel at seven, and then what am I gonna do before I go to bed? I mean, I could go to bed early, but if I go to bed much before nine, then I'll wake up at five in the morning, and breakfast doesn't start till 7.30 in the morning. This is the, the plight of the jet lagged, and so, the great way to just keep myself up is to walk. People often ask me, Chris, how do you, um, how do you beat jet lag? And my first day in a destination, I try to just be outside as much as I possibly can. And that really seems to help me um, adjust because then I'm actually really quite tired. But if I go back to the hotel, then I will, I will absolutely uh, like a sleeping little baby. Okay, so it's official. I failed miserably on walking straight back to the hotel, but I saw Clark Key and it was on my list of places that I wanted to go and check out. It's a big nightlife area, uh, as you can tell, because it has a branch of Hooters. That's right, Hooters in Singapore. And it turns out this Hooters was actually the first in Asia. Uh, but Clark Key really gets going late at night. It's along the Singapore River. You can take like boat cruises from here. <clears throat> if you're looking for things to do, at night and even in the rain this is a pretty good spot because there's a neat kind of like covered street up here with lots of lights on it this is a pretty lively spot and i'm glad i made the detour this is kind of like 
how I often plan my trips. I don't like super plan them out, but I have a list of all the things I want to see that I start with at the beginning. And then each day I decide on a few things I'm going to go look at. And then I, when I end up near other things, then I just check those out when I'm there. From Clark Key, you can also get a really unique picture of the Marina Bay Sands. Uh, you need to have a good zoom lens to get this photo, but it's neat to have these illuminated bridges over the river with that Marina Bay Sands in the back. One of the really nice things about walking around Singapore is it's all like really safe. There's no like apparently sketchy part of Singapore. Now walking through Clark Key District, I'm in the Civic District. Right back there was the Singapore Parliament in a really neat colonial building. That's another great juxtaposition between like 1800s colonial architecture and the modern Singapore skyline in the back. 820, made it back to the hotel and it has a really trippy entrance. This is the JW Marriott Singapore South Beach. You come up to this digital screen, some funky like lounge music in here. I, I this feels more like a W Hotel than it does a JW Marriott and something tells me it maybe used to be the W Hotel and was renamed the JW Marriott. It's uh, apparently owned by the same person that owns the JW Marriott in Hong Kong, which is one of my favorite Marriott's in the chain over the check-in desk. They've got these things that make it look like candles and uh, then the, the weirdness continues as we get in the elevator that I want to show you here. Let's push that button and wait for one of these to show up. Here we go. All right, we come in the elevator. It's got like fish on the back and color changing lights. And uh, you gotta tap this room key. I always have a hard time finding my number 15. Doors close and here we are. Oh, I actually wanna go to the lounge before I go to my room. Oh, too far. Stop, come back. Second floor. All right. Uh, like the lounge is totally why I stay here. Let's go see if they have some dessert. Well, no dice on the lounge, even though it's open till nine, dessert ends at 7.30, all that was left was drinks, and I guess I probably don't need to eat anymore tonight anyway. All right, room 1515, finally back in the room. Oh, I wanna show you a couple cool things of it. There will be a full hotel review in a moment, but the bathroom right here, it's got this little thing that looks out into the room, although you can close it with this mirror that's pretty neat housekeeping organized all my stuff for me down here that was all strewn out about the counter and then coming into the room really nice bed i slept in there super like a little baby jesus last night but the coolest part about the room i think is this view all the central business district down there marina bay off to the left and then in true lost in translation style it's got this neat big sofa right in front of it uh, to just sit there and admire the view but now it's time for me to hit the hay i'll see you in the morning all right, well, hey, good morning. It's 7.30 a.m. Singapore time. I've been up since about six. I couldn't sleep anymore. Breakfast doesn't start till 7.30, so I did some video editing of my United Premium Plus review to get out here. Look forward to that soon. Now I'm gonna go down and get some breakfast in the lounge, which is amazing. I mean, this is one of like the best Marriott lounge breakfasts. I breakfasts, is that even a word? Marriott breakfast that I've ever had. And uh, today, since I'm up early, I'm gonna head off to the Singapore Zoo. I'll see you there. So to get to the zoo, I opted for a taxi instead of the haze of MRT to shuttle bus. The taxi was about 30 minutes with a really chatty taxi driver and cost me 25 Singaporean dollars. Uh, spent a couple hours wandering around the zoo, seeing lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my, actually no bears. The bear was, was sleepy, but they do have a bear here. It's the Malay bear. It's the smallest bear in the world, but uh, the Singapore Zoo, my favorite zoo anywhere. I love the open attractions. I love to hang out with the monkeys and the bats and see the butterflies flies and now I'm at lunch I'm at the Ah Ming restaurant this restaurant is named after the most famous orangutan that they have here uh, this zoo is home to the world's largest colony of captive orangutans and they're actually like free roaming around the zoo you can see the staff members sometimes have to like bring them back to their living area here I got the tandoori chicken set let's go ahead and dive into this oh and you know but this whole like thing about not providing 
napkins or Kleenex. I mean, even here at the zoo, if you want to wipe your hands, you better have brought some tissue with you or pay $2 at the cashier to have something to wipe your hands and mouth in. I'm glad I brought some from the hotel. Mm, chicken faithful though. The biryani here has like raisins in it. Pretty good. Um, I don't know that I'd call this a naan because it's so small, but we'll go ahead and dip that right here in the little curry. Mm, they're pretty good too. I mean, overall for zoo food, I really, I really can't complain. And if I did, it wouldn't do me any good anyway. All right, after four hours in the Singapore Zoo, it's time to go check out the next River Wonder Park. But before that, I stopped in the food court uh, between the two right outside the main gate to get some more icy dessert. This is the Bo Bo Cha Cha Shave Ice Condensed Milk with Sweet Potato, with Taro, and with Jelly. Oh wow, the sun just came out, it got really bright. It's good, refreshing, so it's melting quickly because it's so hot. So before heading into River Wonders, I noticed there was a Starbucks and I came in here and noticed they had these super cute Starbucks bear merlions. I mean, this is a uh, like awesome Starbucks. You have like a cool merchandising team that you dress your bear up as the Singapore's mascot. He's not a panda, so I don't know that he's coming home with me. I think there's a panda at the Singapore uh, River Park gift shop that's coming home, but he's always got a place in my heart, I think. You know, it's funny, I often find that US brands are often better outside of the US than they are in the US. Starbucks is no exception. Their dessert counter here, they've got red velvet cake, carrot cake, lychee cake, pink rose velvet cake, yuzu cheesecake, strawberry shortcake, I mean, why can't we have this in the US? So now you're probably thinking, what is a river park? Well, this is Asia's first zoo that is basically focused on animals that live in or around rivers. And I would say this feels like an aquarium crossed with SeaWorld, crossed with a zoo. It doesn't feel as natural as the actual zoo zoo does. And the admission is less because I think this park isn't as dandy. Frankly, after walking through the whole thing, it's not. But um, you see a lot of like aquariums like this that you can see from inside and the top. That right down there, there's a tunnel that you go in and you can see the aquarium from around it. It's pretty neat. There's like a sea otter going over there. There is one show in here and there's one ride. To do the ride, Amazon River Wonders, it's like an old ride like the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland except it's outside and you see animals and you have to pay an extra five dollars to ride the boat ride which I just found more insulting than anything but my guess is it was probably free when they opened this and they come to me for riding it and they had to control capacity and so there's a five dollar fee like they don't sell tickets there you have to use your cell phone behind online which is just another one of those annoying things would I come to the river park again I know think so. I mean, I would go to the zoo again because the zoo is pretty neat, but I think one trip to this river park is enough. The reason I think you would come to this river park is that it is rainy. If it's a rainy day and you can't go to the zoo because there's not enough cover, uh, you can come here because like the entire walk is undercover, which also made it a little bit cooler, which was nice. And I was sad. I didn't get to see the pandas. It was a panda habitat and we were all sleeping but I will still take a Made in Singapore stuffed panda home with me at the gift shop. After I walk through a second time, see I do one walk to just experience it, and I'm gonna go around again to make a walking tour video uh, that you can all watch later if it wants to us out. Pretty sure my feet are going to be unhappy with me later today. I can feel the blisters starting to form in there. All right. So I think I ended up planning quite well. The thunder and lightning here at 4.30, the rain is coming down torrentially. Luckily, I'm here undercover at the river park. 
thank you, Singaporean government weather forecast, for letting me know the afternoon is going to be rainy. Also, the taxi driver on the way here told me that's how it is in Singapore. If you want to do something outside, do it in the morning because in the afternoon, often thunder showers. Just on cue. Well, and my best plan of showing you the show was canceled because of the rain. Uh, but instead, because of the rain, they were just bringing some animals out to show them to us. Anyway, if you're planning to visit the show here, I would say do the morning sessions because afternoon thunderstorms in Singapore are pretty typical. Even though the show was canceled, I did get to get a cool selfie with an owl. Meet? Nice to meet you. So, the problem with being at the Singapore Zoo when it starts to rain is that everybody wants to leave at the same time and with no good public transportation options, the lines for the bus were exceptionally long, the taxi rank was super long lines, and of course nobody's coming to the zoo because it's raining and Grab had no cars available, uh, so what did I do? I took the expensive taxi. There are white and black taxis in Singapore that uh, either don't have to use the meter or have higher meter rates. They were hanging out. I said, hey, um, are you available? And they're like, where are you going? And I said, uh, JW Marriott South Beach. And they're like, $50. I'm like, okay, that works for me. Otherwise, I'd, I'd probably still be at the zoo. And I wanted to come back to shoot a time lapse of the sunset. And I would have been really sad if I didn't get to do that. Uh, and then also eat dinner at the lounge here at the JW Marriott. Now, I'm not one to often eat hotel lounge food for dinner, especially in a place as delicious as Singapore, because the food out there in the city is amazing. But the food in this lounge is amazing as well. I had some amazing uh, noodle soup. I had some amazing Malaysian fish cakes, some amazing desserts, uh, and even Singaporean beer. Hey, you know what they say, when in Rome. Now, before I go to bed for the night, I do want to introduce you to Lele. Yes, one of the Made in Singapore pandas did make it back to the hotel with me, 32 Singaporean dollars. And I was disappointed to find out that the stuffed animal itself is not made in Singapore. He is made in China, um, but it's a stuffed animal of the panda that was born in Singapore. So there we go. It's quite big eyes on that panda. Lele, you're going to help me for the JW Marriott Hotel Review later because I didn't bring one of the typical Yellow Productions crew because I knew I would bring back a Singaporean panda addition to the crew. So you're going to be Topher for this trip, all right? OC Girl's not here to voice Topher, but we'll just put in a, all right? People sometimes think that's my girly voice and no, the voice of Topher is OC Girl. Good Monday morning in Singapore. What is one to do on a rainy day in Singapore? With this behind me, you would think I'm going into Universe Studios. I'm not, but I really like this scene here. I've come to Sentosa Island, where Universe Studios is, to check out Resorts World. Uh, Resorts World in Las Vegas is one of my favorite new casinos in Vegas, and I haven't got a chance to check out the Resorts World casino here, or really even like explore this part of Sentosa Island. I've been to Sentosa Island a number of times. You can watch my previous video on it where I like took the cable car, did some of the hikes, did the zip line. There's so much fun to be had here, but uh, I guess today I'm checking out the developed area. Chris, why are you going to Universal Studios Singapore? I have a lot of requests to do a video on this place. Um, and could I live in Los Angeles, home to Universal Studios Hollywood, like the original one? That's why. Going around Resorts World, apparently they've got some like bunny verse thing going on. So I don't know. I just I needed to take a selfie with this guy for for some reason. He was calling out to me. OK, this is the escalator down into the casino. One of the um, trippiest, most illuminated escalators I've been to on this trip yet. This place is really quite grand and cavernous with nobody in the casino. Maybe because I'm here early and everybody comes here at night. It's, it's new, so, uh, yeah, me and the, the safety code. And that answers that question. Apparently this is for my eyes only. So now that I'm out of the camera-free zone, what was that casino like? Well, it was small. It was a lot smaller than the Las Vegas Resorts World Casino. Red, a lot of red inside, a lot of table games. I saw a lot of people playing roulette. A lot of slot machines, too. The slot machines, though, they're 
kind of the lame ones. They're not like the really cool ones in Vegas. They feel like the ones that you would find at a Native American casino in the USA. There's clearly a lot of regulations about what they can actually play in there. There's a buffet that was like $20 for lunch, and I had lunch in the cafe um, where I got some dim sum items for 18 bucks. What's kind of nice is they got free um, Malaysian milk tea inside out of these vending machines, free uh, fountain soda as well. So I like that. And by the way, the exclusion limit, uh, that's what they call it. For Singaporean residents, they need to pay $150 a day just to get in. You know, like they don't get that back or $3,000 for an annual pass. And apparently like gambling must be such a problem here. The government is so concerned about it that like the ads or screens they have inside to be like, don't leave your child at home. I mean, it's pretty serious that they don't really want the locals to gamble. And so to get in, you have to show your passport plus the like e-visit certificate that Singapore Immigration sends you once you come into the country. And then you have to show your passport to leave as well. Now it's really unbusy in there, probably because everybody's at Universal Studios Singapore right now. But I, you know, when I was looking at the hours of the theme park, it's open, like they close at 6 p.m. And I think that's so that uh, people can come to the casino afterwards, because that seems like a really early closing time. But my favorite attraction on Sentosa Island, it's not the casino, it's not Universal Studios, it's the Skyline Luge. To get to this, you take the train to the Imbia station, and then you can either take the cable car or you can walk up to Imbia Lookout. This is like the top of the hill on Sentosa Island and this luge. They're like these little cars that you can take and ride them down the hill. Even if it's raining, they'll give you like a poncho to wear. It's super fun. And then you take basically like a ski lift to come back up. Pro tip, do two rides because you'll learn a little bit on your first time and you'll definitely want to go down again. You know, a neat thing about walking around and hiking, I mentioned is the wildlife here are some wild peacocks on Sentosa Island. And also, uh, this used to be a military base. And so a lot of the military buildings they've repurposed for other things. This former military hospital is now a Madame Tussauds. I think that's the coolest wax museum building I've ever seen. And if you don't want to spend your money to go in, they've always got like one wax figure you can take a picture of uh, right out front. Now, one thing I really love in Singapore are these treetop walks, and there's quite a few of them up here on Sentosa. There's other ones around Singapore, but like they build them high above the floor of the forest, and uh, it's really it's really peaceful up here um, in the rain. You know, the rain coming down on the leaves, and uh, sure, you could certainly uh, bring an umbrella or a rain poncho. But how do they keep it safe? Uh, it's a city surveillance state, and so they've got CCTV cameras everywhere even on the hiking trails. All right, so after my hike and visiting Madame Tussauds, I was just about done with Sentosa Island, but I wanted to visit the beach before I go, because I'm a beach boy. I love beaches and nobody's here, um, I think, because it's a rainy day and a weekday. I think this is a weekend destination. There is a lifeguard right here in this little hut, and I'm pretty sure I'm being watched right now too. So hi there, whoever's watching those cameras. What's also interesting about uh, this beach that makes it, it like it feels really like serene and peaceful right uh, and then you look out this way and like all the cargo ships and uh cranes really just kind of ruin the view back there Ooh, looks like there's somebody doing jet skis that looks like fun so to leave Sentosa Island, I contemplated taking the cable car. It's like $33. I've done it before, so I just took the train back. It comes in here to Vivo City, turn left out of the train station, and is my one of my favorite food courts in Singapore, the Food Republic in the Vivo City Mall. It's like three o'clock, so it's not time for dinner yet, but uh, I can get a little afternoon pick-me-up. This is a mango shave ice from a shave ice stall in the back, um, cold refreshing it's got fresh mango and it's got mango ice cream on it it doesn't get any better than that and because it's a food court instead of a hogger center it's air conditioned which is nice so after finishing up my mango shave ice exploring vivo city i came here to another shopping mall but this just isn't any shopping mall as you can see by those trains back there those are the airport trains at changi airport this is the jewel the center shopping mall of Changi Airport. And no, I'm not flying out today. The vlog is not over. I came here just to come around the shopping mall. As many people in Singapore do, the shopping mall is that amazing. It's got the world's largest indoor waterfall. It's got like a bridge over there that you can cross to see it from up high. Uh, it's got 280 restaurants and shops and 
the whole thing is amazing in a word. I mean, like, it just makes me happy to know that a place like this exists, like that somebody could conceive and build this thing. And it's truly things like this that make the attractions in Singapore like one of a kind. No other, no other airport in the world has the world's largest indoor waterfall. And those trains that go by, they've like, they're the ones that connect the other terminals. They, they've timed them to like slow down so that as you come by, like you can look out and be like, oh, look at the waterfall. It's really neat, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty neat. I think so. Well, boy, after conquering all seven stories of the jewel, five above ground and two below ground, I've worked up an appetite down basement level two. At the Food Republic, I stopped in to find, like I walked around to figure out what most people were eating. And uh, from the Indonesian place, it seemed like a lot of people were having this. How's this work? Uh, you get your choice of one or two meats and then four veggies and some rice. And so we got the beef rendang, we've got some chicken and their choice of veggies from the stall. Uh, and to drink, I got a oolong tea, um, which this is a very classic uh, Singaporean style of giving you a tea where they give it to you in a bag with some handles. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive in. They put a little bit of sauce on the rice and let's dive into this beef right here. Mmm. 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 Tender, juicy, and, um, and spicy too. When they asked me if I wanted spicy sauce and I said yes, they're like, oh, you can eat spicy. Boy, every time a white guy eats some spicy food around here, I just impress the locals, let me tell you. Oh, and these green forks, uh, that means this food is halal food. And uh, so when I return it, there are different tray returns for regular food and halal food. And so I'll need to find the halal tray table to uh, tray return to put this in. Well, after dinner, I stuck around the jewel until it got dark to see the nighttime show on that waterfall. It was Disney themed, so I had like Disney characters on it, Disney music. Pretty neat to have the whole atrium darken and projections on that waterfall. And as fantastical as when I saw the Bellagio about for the first time. But before I go back to the hotel, I stopped at Cow Cow Ice, an ice cream shop from Tokyo, Japan. Milk ice cream. But Joe flavorful and rich. And this is the Cow Cow Ice Cream Sundae. There's a cheesecake on it. It's a good cheesecake too. Not cheap. $9.80. All right, the top of the Tuesday morning to you. I'm just walking over to the Bugis Street Market. And here in front of Bugis Plus, I saw this really interesting vending machine. This vending machine makes smoothies, but it's actually got like uh, avocado, banana, lychee, mango, papaya, all this fruit right in here that it makes up fresh to make your smoothie. Pretty neat. Take that, pouring orange juice machine. Okay, and here we are, Bugis Street. This is the largest street market in Singapore. And um, I mean, the nice part about it is it's covered. I was already getting quite warm walking over here and I wouldn't really call it air conditioned, but maybe a little bit like there is some cool air in here or it just hasn't baked completely because the sun's not out, uh, but there's like lots of vendors selling souvenirs. The sign they use is novelties, fun things. What are you gonna do with it? Glow in the dark, merlions, merlion chocolate, merlion keychain, everything you could want shaped like a merlion you will find here. Also, they had, uh, there's food, there's food vendors here. Some interesting waffles I saw and durian. I contemplated trying some durian until I saw the price, $25 for the durian. That's, that's cray cray. All right, so after exploring the Bugis Street Market, I was hungry and there's a Albert Food Center right across the street. So I came into this Hawker Center, found a place that had some food I liked. There was a stall that has a fried hawken me, prawn me, which has, you get like basically your choice of size, five, six, eight, or $10. More noodles, more seafood. Mine has three shrimps on it. I got the $6 one. They put it in like a, a tray with some wax paper on it and then the noodles inside, that's how you get it. And as she was serving it to me, she told me that her, her chili sauce is very spicy. So that I should not, I should not mix the chili sauce in first, that I should try it. Let's go ahead and see how spicy the spicy chili sauce is. <laughs> she was right. That is, that is super spicy. I mean, I wouldn't call it death, but, uh, but she wasn't kidding. That's pretty good. Warm, and to wash it down. 
lime juice, of course, $1.80. So after lunch, I walked about 15 minutes over here to Kampong Glom to check out the Sultan Mosque that we're gonna look at in just a moment. I'm walking up the street to it right now and on the street, uh, the street used to be called Sultan Street. It's now called Busara Street after a um, place in Iraq, but there's a ton of like Turkish restaurants, kind of like Middle Eastern vibe to it. But the Sultan Mosque that I'm gonna turn around to show you right here was actually home to the uh, Sultan from Malaysia, Johor, town just to the north of Singapore. And uh, this is a really important area for the Muslim community in Singapore. They've got like a street fair that's going on today. It's hot, the walk made me hot. So I got another iced sendal from Mak and Malacca. They had a sign that said it's like, Singapore's uh, Singapore's favorite shave ice. But instead of coming in a cup with a spoon, it comes, or a bowl with a spoon, it comes like with a straw. So, mm, I don't have to worry about it melting. Although it's been about five minutes since I ordered it, so I could come over here and shoot this scene and um, it's melted already. But icy cold water is really good for drinking out of a straw. I feel like I'm melting. I feel like I'm melting too. I need to pull out my towel, but I don't have an extra hand, otherwise I would. Oh, and it's not just any silly street festival. This is the festival that they have for the holy month of Ramadan, which it is right now. I found that out after going in the mosque. Visitors can go in for a few hours a day after taking off my shoes and putting on a fancy new skirt to cover my knees. Uh, I was able to go in, take a look around the mosque, uh, chat with some of the friendly people inside that told me uh, they're gonna be celebrating their 200 year anniversary of the mosque uh, next year. So right now it's a 199 years old. Well, after going in the mosque, I did a little exploration around this neighborhood and found this really cute lane. This is Haji Lane. It's just a like a pedestrian street to walk down. There's more neat cafes, bars, shops, street art. And uh, I mean, it's Singapore, so you are never far from a from a convenience store like 7-Eleven. I think I'm gonna go in there and get a drink, but I also just had an ice cream from Birds of Paradise Gelato, thanks to the tip from some fellow Singaporean explorers that I met on Sentosa Island yesterday. That was a pretty tasty raspberry lychee ice cream. Hey, and right next to 7-Eleven, what was there? Type Bar, a place where you can play with a typewriter for $5 for 15 minutes. I mean, I guess these are antiques for kids today. So I got my drink here at 7-Eleven, and you know, I'm usually one who likes to savor my drinks for a long time. I'll spend an hour or two on an iced tea or a drink, but in Singapore, I've really had to learn to chug them because uh, it's like cold right now, and in about 15 minutes of being outside, I'm gonna have some hot tea instead of iced tea. Apparently, Haji Lane is where the characters come out, including this guy. All right, well now that my tea is done, means it's been five minutes, and where am I going five minutes later? I am on my way to Little India to go check out the Hawker Center at Little India, hoping to get some good roti over there, but it seems like everything's 15 minutes away in this vlog. Like, Chris, how come everything you walk is 15 minutes away? 15 minutes is about as long as I can take walking out in the sun in Singapore, and 15 minutes is kind of also the um, like diminishing returns on taking the MRT at that point. Also, a lot of construction going on in Singapore. Seems like everywhere I go, there's jackhammers, but I guess that's, uh, that's progress for you. All right, so I'm almost at the Tekka Center and I came across this little park here in Little India. I mean, it, it's not real grass, it's uh, AstroTurf, but there were these like cows in here. Cows are sacred in India. And uh, so I think this is like the, the sacred park. It's also the place where the locals have afternoon nap time. Something I see a lot in Singapore around two, three in the afternoon, just tons of people uh, flailed out and uh, taking a nap because it's, it's so hot. Or, um, you know, the other thing I, like I need to get used to as a, as a California boy here is slowing, slowing my walk down. I walk so fast and it's really hard to walk that fast uh, here especially on your feet. So I really gotta walk slower. Yeah, walking around Little India reminds me of um, Chinatowns in the US where the store is not just the store, but the store is the, is the sidewalk, which this is the store, this is the sidewalk, and in this case, the store is the sidewalk. Many of these stores are open 
24 hours, and so that's how they can just have everything on the sidewalk. They never close, they never have to put it in. I mean, some of them have to put it in, like maybe this store has a little cart here, um, like they'll put that little cart in. But those big things, the, like the coolers and things like that, they don't, they don't go anywhere. All right, I made it to the Tekka Center. I did my lap around to figure out what looks tasty. It's like four o'clock, so it's not really dinner time yet. There were some tasty looking biryani spots, but I decided to get myself some Prata. Prata is Indian flatbread. The best places make it fresh when you order it, just as they did at this stall. $2.50 right here for my honey Prata. So this is the flatbread, kind of like a dessert. You know, one can never have too many desserts in a day. And I only have one hand because I'm holding it, so. Mmm. Mmm. It's hot, it's fresh, it's soft, it's crispy, it's sweet, it's all pretty good. Mmm. I also like the ones that come with curry. Like you can get it with a curry sauce on the side, and then instead of a filling, like you dip it into the curry. That's pretty good. And then from the drink stall next door, uh, they had a picture that said, this former Singaporean uh, like prime minister or president had, had drank there. So I'm like, well, that can't be wrong. So I got the honey ginger lemon, which they are supposed to specialize in. <coughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. That drink has so much ginger in it. Like this immediate like ginger, gingery like whoa, that comes up in the throat. Mm. I think this, this, this should keep me healthy. So Gardens by the Bay is a really interesting modern botanical garden. It's like huge. It's right behind the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. That's the one with the surfboard on it. And this garden, like you can walk around the grounds for free, but then there's attractions that you have to pay to get into. There are two big attractions are the Flower Dome, which I'm in right now, and the Cloud Forest Dome. I paid $53 for the combo ticket to go into both. Flower Dome has a Sakura cherry blossom thing here for March and April, which is funny because I'm going to Japan in two weeks to see the actual cherry blossoms that are there. But it was only eight bucks more to add on the Flower Dome uh, after the Cloud Forest Dome. And I figured, what the heck, I might as well go ahead and walk through. They are very small and young cherry blossom trees though. Having seen the real ones in Japan, these are kind of sad, but you know, cherry blossoms probably don't do all that well with the heat in Singapore. So I'm curious like how they grow these things or where they grow these things so that they can like bring them in here once it's springtime. And yes, the Cloud Forest Dome is definitely cooler. I've been in this one before. Uh, it's now Avatar themed, which definitely makes it different because there's now blue creatures all around, but it's a misty cloud forest every two hours on the even hour it starts to mist and so you can see these misters coming up back here i think maybe we come this way in the sun you can see the misters this is the time you want to be here 10 12 2 4 6 8 who do we appreciate because the mist really gives it a amazing vibe to it Oh, and so for me, I wouldn't go into the Flower Dome by itself. I mean, that was like a 15 minute walk through. I could easily spend like an hour in this Cloud Forest Dome. So this one's worth it. And it's even worth it to come back in again. Oh, and having been in this dome twice now, I would say if you can time it, try to come here at night because the mist is like even more spectacular in the nighttime. The dome closes at nine, last admission is at eight. So I try to get in here about 7.30 as the sun is going down or even 7.15, just not to chance it. All right, I probably spent about 45 minutes in the Cloud Forest Dome. There's a dragon avatar there. And like, if, when you come here, whether it's avatar themed or not, like the dome is just cool without these things. So if you see in, in a year or two or a month, it's no longer the avatar experience. It's not about the avatar experience. It's about the Cloud Forest in a dome. After all that walking in the flower domes, it was time to have dinner. And the Gardens by the Bay has a new food court. It's called the Jurassic Nest Food Hall. And all of the eateries in here are like Michelin starred or Bib Gourmand eateries. And so I was able to find a branch of Hawker Chan, which was the first stall in Singapore to get a Hawker star. And they specialize in their soy sauce chicken rice uh, that also comes with these like beans on the side. I got the additional pork and a um, like wonton soup. 
20 Singaporean dollars. This is my most expensive hawker or food court meal thus far, owing to the premium Gardens by the Bay touristy trap location and very good air conditioning in here. So uh, here, let's dip this in the chili sambal sauce and give it a go. Mm, bone. So once I decided not to eat the bone, um, flavorful, juicy, and let's try this with the beans. Mm. Interesting, quite flavorful, like sweet and salty, and a little bit spicy, though that might be a lingering spice from my chili sambal. Good, better than tan tan chicken rice. I mean, I don't know, for the price, tan tan chicken rice can't be beat. All right, after dinner, it's time to walk back to the hotel. That's what I seem to do every day, but not before I walk through the Marina Bay Sands Shopping Center because I'm gonna go check out the nighttime show that starts at 8 p.m. in just about 15 minutes. But this is like a modern version of maybe the Venetian in Las Vegas. Actually, turns out, same company, Sands Corporation, that built the Venetian in Vegas, built this place. And yes, that's a gondola. Uh, except they don't call it a gondola here, they call it a sampan that they take through the canals below. So I've seen that light show before too, and I will say it's just as good the second time. I feel like they've definitely improved it since I was here five years ago. And what's really neat about this light show is, I mean, just the backdrop. The backdrop of the skyscrapers of Singapore, super neat. Better than the Jewel Show. You know, the Jewel Show, I waited around for that and it was like two minutes long in the waterfall. This was 15 minutes long, so well worth the price of admission, which turns out to, to be free. So yeah, you can't beat that. Now, time for me to walk back to the hotel. And uh, you know how long that walk is gonna be? 15, no, actually 26 minutes. Um, if I could swim across the bay, it'd be 15, but I gotta walk. And uh, this is actually a really neat walk around Marina Bay. Uh, it's popular for people to run, it's popular for people to bike. Uh, and so like an evening walk around Marina Bay is a spectacle in and of itself. It might take me longer than 25 minutes since I'm nursing these blisters on my feet. Every day I seem to collect another one. So uh, tomorrow I think I need, to, I need to take it a little easy so that I can still walk for the remaining two weeks of Chris's great Asia adventure here. Oh, and definitely one of the coolest parts of the walk is crossing over this, the Helix Bridge. Oh, and if you heard music, those were some cyclists back there. People like to light up their bikes and decorate their bikes and play music as they ride through here. But this Helix Bridge, pedestrian only, and it was built to resemble strands of DNA. Good Wednesday morning. This is my last full day in Singapore and I'm missing this place already. Okay, I won't be missing the heat and humidity, but I'm just missing the place. I am on my way to the National Museum of Singapore for a bit of a cultural day today. I just took the MRT to the Brass Bassa stop, which lets out in the basement of Singapore Management University, the campus that I'm standing on right now. And what I thought was funny was I saw a group of students, actually multiple groups of students, practicing K-pop uh, down there in the basement of the MRT. Apparently K-pop is popular everywhere in the world, even in Singapore. You know, and I'm usually not that into museums, but this one is actually pretty cool. It goes in the whole history of Singapore, how the Chinese, the Europeans, the Indians, the Arabs, the Malays, and more came together to form this melting pot. And you know, you might think, Chris, how do they have a neat modern museum in that old classic building? Well, they've actually built like a new museum building connected to the old one. Uh, and so like the displays are just really neat and really intriguing and really, quite immersive. Oh, and I also learned a little interesting tidbit about Singapore, how it's related to Australia. You know, Australia being a British convict nation, Singapore started a similar way. Uh, apparently, convicts from British India were sent here to build a number of their government buildings. You should definitely check this out if you visit Singapore. After the museum, I hopped on a quick 10 minute bus ride over to Orchard Road to my favorite food court here in the basement level four of Iron Orchard, the food opera as it's called, 
It is a really neat themed food court. It kind of has like a old Victorian feel to it, probably reminiscent of the British colonial area here in Singapore. Makes sense after coming out of that National Museum that was also British colonial. What have I got here? I've got um, the prawn noodles like I had just the other day because I love these and so I had to get a second portion of them. But I've also got the carrot cake. Now you might be thinking, Chris, that doesn't look like any carrot cake I've ever seen. This is a carrot cake in Singapore. It has no carrots. Uh, it is made of radish mixed with flour um, that are kind of uh, steamed, made into these little cubes with egg, stir-fried with egg and garlic, and always served with some spicy chili sambal sauce. Mmm, pretty good. And to drink, I've got a honey, iced honey lemon, which is more honey than it is lemon. Good though. $13 here at the Food Opera because it is hot today and I, I really needed some air conditioning in a food court. All right, so I've emerged from basement level four up on top to Orchard Road. I was in Iron Orchard for a couple hours, lost track of time in daylight, and I was glad to see when I got out here that it's uh, partly cloudy, which is the perfect weather in Singapore. And Orchard Road, which is what I'm strolling down right now. I mean, I'm not strolling down the road. This is the sidewalk on Orchard Road. This is the shopping hub of Singapore. There are like 20 plus shopping malls just on this one street. This is like the closest you get in Singapore to the Las Vegas Strip. Like this is the strolling street. If you want to go for a stroll and do high-end shopping, it's here. Look, there's no casinos, um, but this is definitely the place to be. It's a one-way street over there. You'd hardly know there was a street. You can probably hear the cars, but they have some nice plants built up. They really don't want you to cross this street by foot. And so like to cross a lot of the intersections, you actually have to go like in pedestrian underpasses, like tunnels to get under there. Man, it's four o'clock and I haven't had my first dessert of the day yet. Well, lucky me, I found the ice cream cart. And these carts are the best deal on Orchard Road because for $1.50, you get a a uh, hunk of ice cream that they actually like cut off a brick on a piece of bread. I mean, okay, it's, it's not gourmet, but it's cheap and it's cold and uh, you can get mango flavor. I got mango flavor. You can get durian flavor. So you can get some pretty unique Asian flavors at these ice cream stands. You need to have at least one of these when you come to Orchard Road. Mm. Pretty good. Uh, but in addition to Ion Orchard, the other mall that I like is the uh, Takashimaya Shopping Center right here. This one is a branch of kind of like one of Japan's flagship department stores. They have a really neat food hall down at the bottom. And it's also a good street for strolling because there's trees that help provide some shade when it's sunny. And then you can just duck into any one of these shopping centers if it's raining or if it's too hot to get some AC before you continue. And I think I, I think I might just do that now. I'm gonna go in there. All right. You know, by this point in most days, I already be like two desserts in, so I figured I still had room for some more dessert. I've been seeing this coconut queen store like everywhere in Singapore and it finally decided to try it. I got the original coconut smoothie, which has coconut ice cream, coconut juice, and coconut flesh. And it comes in a bag, so it's easy to carry. All right, here we go. Coconut. Smoothie, it's nice. It's coconutty, it's milky, and tasty. And what was once a beautiful sunny day an hour later now is pouring rain in buckets. But the rain here, it's, it's highly localized. Why don't you have an umbrella, Chris? I'm standing under a glass roof. Uh, just over there, looks like sunny and blue skies. Well, fellow explorers, now that it's six o'clock, I think I'm gonna make my way back to the hotel. I've had enough walking for one day. I've had enough desserts for one day. I've certainly had enough shopping for one day. I got an early flight tomorrow to Taipei to continue Chris's great Asia adventure. You can look forward to more episodes coming up from Taipei and then onwards to Japan. But if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more of my videos from Singapore, you'll find links here on the screen or in the description below. And if you liked it and you don't go watch those videos because you watched all my videos, please give me a thumbs up on your way out. I'd appreciate it. Thanks.